have is uh, going to bless your life. It's going to really revolutionize where you're headed in your thought process. I want to talk today about kingdom success. Somebody say kingdom success. kingdom success. We started talking a few weeks ago about desire and the importance of going towards those things that you desire in the spirit. Those things that God has promised us that the Bible says belong to us. And then last week we talked about what do you want because you have to be able to get it settled what you want and see the word of God says that you can have it but you have to be able to think towards that you can't have stinking thinking and so we're going to camp out on the fact of how our thought process can bring us towards our goals and the victory of where we want to go and where God wants to take us and so this morning I want to jump into this dealing with kingdom success and what it takes to walk in kingdom success. And we look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This is our scripture that we're going to be dealing with today. It says, do not be conformed to this world. Now, we like to read this scripture whenever we want to school a sinner. Help me this morning. We want to school a sinner. We want to teach somebody that's worldly uh, how they need to not be worldly. But what about us that are in the kingdom and we're thinking crazy? It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we're in the kingdom, and in Romans, we understand that Paul is talking to the church. But we want to read the scripture to the world. I see y'all want to get quiet on me because I'm talking about you. But see, he says, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we're going to talk about kingdom success today. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the moment that we can be able to receive what your spirit would speak to us today. We give you glory, honor, and praise for what's going to happen as we're going to leave different than we were when we walked in this place today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. So look, we're dealing with how we think and how we need to walk in, 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 in the proper minds of Christ. And so the first thing you got to know is, number one, our brain has been conditioned to think our thought life from birth. So in other words, that's a short way of saying that, uh, you know, when you really open it up, your entire life, you have been thinking the way you've been thinking from birth and been conditioned by mama and daddy and, and, and auntie and grandma and papa and, and, and cousin it, how to think the way you think. And so retraining your brain to think in agreement with God's word is going to take some discipline. Because you look at something and immediately you formulate opinions based upon how you've always thought. But the question is, what does God say about that? Because if you don't know how to retrain your brain on looking at that thing from God's perspective, you're going to revert to how you've always thought. And so your stinking thinking will continue to bring you where you've always got with the results that you don't want when it's all over. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And so everybody, everybody in this place, amen, goes through life with either a kingdom mentality or a worldly mentality. But the question we're dealing with today is which one are you? And only you can answer that question. Because you got to know that if you're going to go towards the bank or you're going to go towards the cross or you're going to be uh, pushed towards coins, clocks, calendars, or circumstances or you're going to make a decision to say, you know what, I'm not going to think like the world rather, but I'm going to think like the kingdom, then you have to make that decision with the brain, with your mentality. And you have to shift out of the mind of the world into the mind of Christ. And that's what we're hammering and dealing with strongly today. Because look, we must choose to develop a renewed mind in order to enter the gateway that leads to kingdom success. Because we are kingdom people. We are a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And where there's a kingdom, there's a king. 
and his name is Jesus, and we serve him, and we increase him, that we might decrease, that we magnify him, that his name is holy, separate, distinct, sacred in the midst of the earth. Are y'all here? And so we want kingdom success. And so Joshua 1.8, one of my favorite portions of scripture, lays out for us how to have kingdom success. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, now look, for then, okay, I've done such and such. I'm looking for the for then. I can't get to the for then until I do what happens before the for then. So I've got to do what I need to do so I can get to the for then. Because everybody in here wants the for then. Because yes, amen. Amen. the for then is this. For then you will make your way prosperous. Yes. And then you will have good success. Right. Everybody wants to be prosperous. Yes. And everybody wants to be successful. Right. But to have all of that, you have to have this stuff before the for then. Are y'all here? Look at Psalm 19, verse 14. It says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And so we break it down like this. Your brain is a programmable physical organ. Okay? It is a programmable physical organ. So you learn... Uh, this is left, uh, this is right, uh, I have feet, uh, that's a bike, that's a car, swimming, eating, you know, this is all stuff, programmable, physical organ, okay? Your mind has now control over your thoughts by personal will. That's right. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. I know, because you thought it. And then you allowed your thoughts to manifest through your mouth. And now you want to take it back and say, well, that's just not me. I don't say things like that. Well, if it wasn't you, then why did it come out of your mouth? That is you. That's the you you didn't want us to see. That's the real you. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Come on, somebody. Because look, your spirit is really the one that should be in control. Your spirit should dictate to your mind, which of course is your thoughts, your emotions, and your will, the thoughts that it should think upon. And so we have to get this retrained where it stops going in the soulless realm and get this trained to go in the spirit realm. So we're talking today about kingdom success. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, hey, listen, I'm telling you something. Think on these things. Hallelujah. In other words, stop doing what you've been doing. Stop thinking about all that mess you're thinking about. Because look, Paul was kind of straightforward. Paul was never vague. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, and he was pretty much, I don't have any time to play with you because I'm in jail, uh, people trying to kill me, and you acting crazy, so get it together. Are y'all here? That's what I love about Paul. See, God has given you the ability. Listen to the scripture. Think on these things. In other words, he didn't say in there, if it be God's will and you can change your personality, that you could start thinking on the right stuff. He said, hey, think on these things. In other words, you have the power or the ability 
to determine, to achieve, and to maintain optimal levels of intelligence, mental health, and physical health. I know you're crazy, but you don't have to be all the time. Yeah. You can choose not to be crazy. That's right. Or at least cover it well. <laughs> so look, the key is this. Your soul must be renewed, which is your mind, will, and emotions, by meditation on God's word, Joshua 1.8, yeah. that you would meditate in that word so that your stinking thinking would begin to move out Package bags like that green Mucinex commercial. That little guy with the hat and the suitcase. And he, you know, honey, I'm home. And the guy takes Mucinex, uh, whatever that's the Muc Mucinex. It's, it's green slime. That's all I know. And when he takes the medicine, he's gone. He's got to come out, right? Well, guess what your medicine is? Joshua 1.8. Yeah. We'll make all them little demons pack their bags and put their little Hawaiian hat and their shirt on and get out. Yeah. So your soul has to be renewed, okay? Yeah. I love 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. But what has He given us? He's given us some power, He's given us some love. And guess what? He did not create you to be nuts. I don't care what your aunt told you. Right. Your granddaddy was nuts. Your daddy was nuts. Your uncle's crazier than a run over dog. <laughs> and your whole life, you've been crazy too, and you're always going to be crazy because it's in the gene pool. <laughs> well, say, you know what? I'm not swimming in there no more. I'm going somewhere else. I'm, I'm getting out the gene pool. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm going to the Holy Ghost pool. Are y'all here? Remember when you go, when you were small, you had to swim in the kiddie pool, uh, and then, then you graduated to the adult pool? Well, guess what? God wants you to graduate out of that gene pool mindset and then to get into the Holy Ghost pool. Stop receiving the fact that it's just in my family tree. Cut that tree down! Burn it! And move on with the Holy Ghost. Are y'all here? That's a word for somebody. Somebody needs to get an axe in the spirit and cut that bad boy down. You see, you can, through a conscious effort, meditate on God's word, programming your mind to accomplish whatever you desire. Yes. Now look, we've said this before. If you put your mind, look, there are certain people, they just, they just, they like just, they just ease in through life. It's just a flow. It's like ain't, ain't, not, just ain't nothing exciting happen. They put, you put your mind to it, you can do anything. Yes. Somebody say, well, I never knew you knew how to do that. What happened? I made a decision yes. to learn, to teach myself, right. to grow, uh, to, to, like, oh, well, you want to speak a foreign language? You know, uh, uh, somebody starts speaking Spanish. When did you learn Spanish? I decided to teach myself. I got a course. I always wanted to learn Spanish. No, you didn't. Because you don't know any Spanish. If you really want to do something, you set your mind, and then what happens? You can accomplish whatsoever you desire when you decide. People say to me all the time, well, I'm unhappy in my home life. Prove it. That's right. That's right. Make a change. Change within yourself. And if you change, then your home changes. That's right. Yes. That's good. I'm unhappy on my job. Prove it. Oh, man, Pastor, you're putting it all on me. Yeah, that's why you come here. You see, Genesis 11:6 6 says that the Lord said, look, they are one people with the same language for all of them. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they have a mind to do will be impossible for them. So look, it's important to understand that a belief can become a physical manifestation. 
Okay? Kingdom success is determined by the ability to focus your vision. So you have to see the vision. You have to begin to declare the vision, speak the vision. You begin to work the vision. You begin to do everything. I'll never forget when Pastor Mike always shares the story of when God gave him uh, the vision for White Dove Fellowship. What did he do? He went and rented a post office box. Didn't have a building. Didn't have a congregation. Didn't have anybody. Just him and Sister Elaine and the kids, right? God told him, you're going to start a church. Okay. He went and got a post office box. Then what did he do? He got up every day and went and checked the mail for a church that didn't exist. Because kingdom success is determined by the ability to focus your vision. When you begin to look forward and you begin to see yourself already in a place, amen, that you're not right now, but prophetically you got a promise, so you're pushing yourself towards, that's why when people say to me, hey, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a car, I'm in the process, I always tell them, while you're shopping, Think about that first cup of coffee that you're enjoying in your new home. Think about that first Sunday afternoon drive in that new car. Begin to visualize yourself in the vision. Otherwise, it's not going to manifest because you have to believe it before you can conceive it, before you can receive it. It has to be birthed within you. Are y'all here? So if you're in a miserable situation, you're in a miserable situation, begin to visualize yourself in a positive situation and begin to move towards that. Otherwise, all you're going to do is camp out with the drama and trauma sisters. Are y'all here? That's not a rock group. That's some devils. Are y'all here? <laughs> Romans chapter 8 says in verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. This is what we're dealing with. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. you got to change your brain on what you dwell upon. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Watch me now, because it's so key that you get this. I'm stressed. I don't know what I'm going to do. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. For the slow learners, that means life and peace. Alright? So look, God did not create you to live life as a slave to your thoughts and feelings. Right. What does that mean? Every day, these thoughts are running through my head and they're fornicating with other thoughts and birthing more thoughts and they're like rabbits and they're multiplying and they're then manifesting into feelings. Feelings. Nothing but feelings. And they're driving me crazy. Yeah, because you're dwelling upon the wrong thing. Joshua 1.8, you must meditate upon this book of the law. On the words, every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. So look, Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 2 says, Set your mind on the things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. You got to get your mind right. For verse 3, you have died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Why are dead people talking? Why are dead people thinking? You are dead in Christ. Why are you talking? Because you took yourself off the cross. Get back on the cross. Because you are not supposed to be involved in this. Come on, somebody. James 1.21, Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive the meekness, uh, the, uh, with, with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. So look, you are a free will speaking spirit with moment-to-moment -moment choice. 
So don't blame it on your upbringing. Don't blame it on the news cycle. Don't blame it on the narrative. Don't blame it on your boss. Don't blame it on your spouse or your children or your grandchildren or, or Auntie M or the person across the street. You are a free will, speaking spirit with moment-to-moment -moment choice. Yeah. Choose wisely. That's good. That's good. That's right. Because look, your brain responds to your spirit through the gift of self-control. It's like in the news. This guy is now in the news and he is convicted of assaulting uh, these, uh, some kids and he is now suing the parents of this kid saying he never would have assaulted the kid if the parents would have uh, raised the kid properly. Now, I don't know how in the world a lawyer would take that case, but there is one. See, your brain responds to spiritual thoughts, sending impulses of life or death, but we choose life, everybody say, I choose life, throughout the physical body. This is why people get sick. I know we like to blame the devil, and of course he has a part to play, but if your thought life is not where it's supposed to be, and you're worrying about stuff, and you're fretting about stuff, and you're stressing about stuff, you're not going to live healthy. You're just not. Because your body is getting messages. It's getting mixed messages. Because you're saying, uh, uh, by his stripes, I was healed. Oh, man, I'm so worried about that situation. And so the body's like. Galatians 2.20, probably my favorite scripture that I quote over and again and again and again and again. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Why is that important? Because your spiritual thought life transforms the physical brain into a gateway to kingdom manifestation. In other words, quality of life is a manifestation. So if I no longer live, but Christ lives, the quality of my life should be pretty awesome. Yes. And it should manifest my belief if I'm believing in him as my source, and I'm believing in him as my all in all, then I should manifest my belief. Yes. What, are, what are you manifesting? That's right. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. We got we to gotta figure it out. See, Exodus 34, 7 says, I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. Why is this scripture important to us this morning? Because the kingdom thought choices that you purposely decide today not only impact your soul and body, but also impact your future generations. Amen. So you have to get your thought life right. Now listen, there's hope. There's hope. Don't leave bewildered and, oh my God, there's hope because you get your thought life right. You ask God for forgiveness. You break off every chain of that foolish thinking, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, you break that off and then you're able to transfer and release that into your children and your children's children. So it's not hopeless, it's only hopeless if you don't change. You have to make an about face today and that you're not going to think like that, live like that, be like that and be honest. Because you ain't fooling anybody. So we're talking about kingdom success. And we look at 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless. Triune being all in concert and in unity flowing in one direction. 
kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let God find us in such a way to where, because uh, so many people, well, I'm saved, and then we're not worrying about the body, and we're not worried about the mind, because, hey, my spirit's going to live forever. You've got to retrain your brain, which in turn will keep this body in proper functioning order. Yeah. Yeah. All right? So look, your thought life is the most powerful influence in your life after God's influence. So God comes into your life. He's the Lord of your life. He's your Savior. He's your Lord. He's your King. He's your Master. He's your best friend. He's, he's better. He, he's, he, he, he's stick to you closer than a brother. He's there for you no matter what you need. And so he's an influence in your life. But then after that, the greatest influence in your life is your self-talk. It's what happens inside of your own brain and heart and, and life uh, that you have control over of how you process information and how you make decisions and choices and what you do. That, in, that is your greatest influence after God. Because then that, that's why you go to places you go. That's why you stay and don't go certain other places. That's why, you know, you got to be careful. You got to be spirit led. Why would I go there, turn around and leave? Or oh, some people will be like, well, I'm just going to stay because I don't want to offend anybody. But if you stay, you can offend the Holy Ghost. That's right. yeah. Or you open yourself up to a demonic attack that the Holy Ghost was trying to protect you from. Offend the people and get out yeah. if the Holy Ghost is putting discomfort in you. Yeah, you don't have to be ugly. Excuse me, I just feel like I need to leave. You know, uh, and if they don't accept that, then you just leave. But, and then sometimes you don't have to say anything. You just get up and go. Right. Because you don't need that in your life. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Look, your free will of thought and choice are both uh, spiritual and scientific facts. Your soul is the gateway from your spirit to your body. I want to say that again. Your soul is the gateway from your spirit to your body. So your mind gets information. Your spirit receives that information and then feeds it to your body. This is important. The devil made me do it. The devil's doing this. The devil's doing that. We give credit to the devil. He wasn't even in the zip code. That's right. That's good. That's good. Just erroneous teachings that takes all of the responsibility off of us and we blame in hell for our stupidity. Yeah. Yeah. The devil didn't make you eat that Big Mac. <laughs> And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> Second Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. Who's bringing the thoughts into captivity? The Holy Ghost? No. God? No. Jesus? No. All of heaven? No. You! That's right. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. All right? So look, your thoughts should be willfully chosen, not just casually accepted. Right. You don't just casually let any old body come on up in your house. Like, who are you? I came for dinner. <laughs> I was walking on by and I smelled some of them in here. And they just sit at your table. No. you like, man, get the helicopter out of my house. I don't know who you are. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you up in here? You willfully choose who you allow to come into your house. You have standards, okay? You know, you wake up in the middle of the night and someone is just standing there staring at you while you're sleeping. Why are you here? I wanted to visit. You have two seconds before I get my gun and we'll have a visit. 
No. So you, you make decisions of who you allow into your life. But see, we, we are, we're very closed off. You're not coming over. You can come over. But when it comes to thoughts, you can come in. You can come in. You can come in. Come on in. Come on in. No. You got to put the stop sign up. You're not welcome in here. You're not welcome in here. You can be crazy out there, but none of y'all are coming in here. Amen? Y'all can do it. See, and that's because, uh, you, you know, you, guilt, you, know, you heard that guilty by association, right? Be careful who you're with. Because guess what? They are carriers of a spiritual disease. And that stuff's going to jump out of them and jump into you through way of contact. See, you can develop and create kingdom success with spirit-led choices. Yes. Got to be spirit-led. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death. Yes. I have set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Man, it's a no-brainer, but why do we struggle with this? Yes. That both you and your descendants may live. Hey, it's a clue. That you will live and your descendants. Yeah. You have a choice to make and you're not just choosing for you. Yes. You know, pregnant women say, oh, I'm eating for two. <laughs> okay? But guess what? In our thought life, you're choosing for many. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. See, your body is not in control of your mind. Your mind is in control of your body. Amen. Your mind is more relentless than your body. It never stops sending thoughts. I can't go to sleep. Why? I'm just thinking. I can hear you thinking. Yeah, that's what happens in our life, you know. My wife's like, what you thinking about? I was like, how you know I'm thinking? She says, I can hear you thinking. <laughs> After 26 years, we don't even have to speak. It's like Star Trek. And then you both get up and go eat. Because you just told each other, let's go eat. You think, I want ketchup. The next thing you know, your spouse is putting ketchup on your fries. What is going on here? Because your brain never stops, your, 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 your mind never stops thinking. It just never, you wake up in the middle of the night, oh, a thought. You see, you are a thinking being. You think moment to moment. And while sleeping, you sort out your thoughts. This is a fact. You're sorting things out, working it out, just working it out, working it out, working it out. Some people need to sleep longer than others, but you know, you work out your thoughts. You see, your mental thoughts become physical proteins that take place in your brain. This is, this is an actual scientific study and understanding of how the brain functions. So we're talking about kingdom success this morning. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4.26, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And a lot of people like to read that scripture and say, I can get, I can get angry and, and I can do what I need to do as long as I just don't let it go into sin. I'm justified because I'm mad right now. No. Listen, you got to be careful about where you allow anger to take you because anger will bring you into a place where you become vulnerable and then your thought life gets skewed, and then the enemy comes in, and it's a smoke screen, and then you can't function in perfect peace. Yeah, yeah that's right. Good. And so, we say it many times. Look, don't go to bed angry. Put on a pot of coffee and stay up all night until somebody can give a little bit, and the other one give a little bit, and then go to sleep. Because the enemy messes with you when you go to bed angry. You wake up, you're jacked up, you, you feel uh, punch drunk, 
You feel like you don't know what's left, what's right, forward, back, and you, you can't function. It takes you a couple of days. It's like, it's like a, a, a you know, jet lag. It takes you a couple of days to figure out who you are because the enemy threw you for a loop and you allowed it to happen. Uh, Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil. Don't give any place to the enemy. Because thoughts are strongholds, actual physical structures that reside in your brain. Actual physical structures. You want to talk about building a wall. I mean, that's building a wall. A spiritual wall of issues and problems. See, memories are physical imaginations that activate genes changing the network of the brain. And so that's why you got addiction, you got phobias, you got bitterness, you got all this stuff because a physical imagination activated a gene and then all of a sudden something begins to flow and then that's why people are like grandpa was addicted and dad was addicted and, and I'm addicted and my brother's addicted because, because something in the gene pool was activated through a physical imagination of a memory and then you, you, you got to break that thing off. Uh, so and so was, was scared of spiders uh, uh, and another, uh, I'm scared of spiders uh, so and so was bitter and, and then I'm bitter because why? Because something was activated that should have never been activated. That's why it's dangerous to continually live in the past. And remember when we were out there, man, and I'm telling you what, we were, man, we, 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 we was drinking, man. We, it was one. You got to be dangerous. You got to be careful because it's dangerous because you're opening stuff up. That's right. See, your constant negative thinking is changing the physical structure of the brain. Yeah, that's right. You're changing how this thing functions and works by staying constantly negative, 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 negative. Yeah. Yeah. Your consciousness, the ability to think mentally, is a gift from God. But if you keep on being negative, you're changing the structure of your brain, and then you have to go the whole other direction. You're making ground that you're going to have to retake through the spirit. Because all you're doing is negative, 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 negative. And it's amazing to me how Christians can be some of the most negative people. We're going to heaven. We serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Our God is the one that said, let there be light and created everything around us. Yeah. We don't have to deal with the 666, the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, or any of that foolishness. We're going to live in eternity, forever, worshiping the King of kings. Hallelujah. But yet, that's all I hear. I don't even know what they said. All I know is just negative. Yeah. We don't have any reason to be negative. That's right. That's right. The people out in the world that don't have Jesus, they don't have a blessed hope, they don't have anything, they're out there with no hope. They got everything. They ought to be negative. And some of them are positive. Yeah. They're going to hell and they're positive. Yeah. <laughs> See, your thoughts with embedded emotions turn brain genes on and off. I want to say that again. I want you to get this. Your thoughts that then now have embedded emotions. So you have a thought. And then that thought is born, and then either joy or sorrow connects itself with that thought. Well, then now turn the genes in your brain, either on or off, to function in a certain way 
giving you fuel towards a certain direction in life. You got to get that. Because events, information, and experiences are assigned meaning by our conscious thoughts. So we had a party, and it was a wonderful party. Or we had a party, and oh my God, it was a miserable time. Or we went to this place, I'll never go there again. Worst experience of my life. Or went to this place, and man, I highly recommend you need to go there. Why? Because that event or that information we, we received or that experience, immediately we assigned meaning to it. I'll never eat at that restaurant again. Took them 30 minutes to take my order. Then I couldn't get a glass of water. I'll never go there again. Because why? Because you have it now within you, a gateway experience of that place that it, you can't ever go there again with an open mind because now you've already decided how it's going to be from here on out because you have assigned meaning right. with conscious thoughts. Yeah. The danger of this is relationships and then there's no grace and then you've just made a decision now. You mark an individual off because of something that happened and none of us in this place would want God to mark us off. See, your mental reaction to life in life's circumstances are all important. How do you react? See, you cannot control circumstances, but you can control your reactions. You can blow up. You can absolutely have an explosion. Or you can say, oh, okay. So, so you wreck the car again? Okay. All right. You hungry? So what am I saying? You can respond to God or you can re react to life. Because life always happens. So when life happens, you can react to life or you can respond to God. Yeah, that's right. React to life, respond to God. Life, God. Right? Amen. We get lost in over here. Because life happened and it didn't happen the way it was supposed to happen. I'm a good person. Why is all of this happening to me? Instead of going over here and responding to God, we're reacting to life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Making our response to God more difficult. That's right. That's true. Because now our attitude is awful. Yes. So to come respond to God, we have to repent. Amen. Because we're jacked up. Yeah. And snarling and <laughs> before we can even get to God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So we're talking about kingdom success. Somebody say kingdom success. Yeah. And so when we look at Proverbs 23:7, it says, For as you think in your heart, so you will become. That's why we've got to check what we're thinking in our heart. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. You have to understand that how you're thinking is navigating your life. Yeah. Medical research tells us that as much as 98% of mental, physical, and behavioral illness comes directly from thought life. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and this is the American Medical Association that decided this. And so you have to understand that you don't need to take two aspirins and call me in the morning. You need to stop thinking like you're thinking. That's right. 
See, Philippians 3.13, uh, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Watch him now. I focus. I focus. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. He says, hey, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. So, you are designed by God to discern your thoughts and focus forward. You are not a victim of your thoughts, imaginations, and feelings. Say this with me. Say, I am not a victim of my thoughts, of my imaginations, and my feelings. You have to remind yourself of that, otherwise you're going to feel like you're locked in. Is everybody okay? Now give me a few more minutes. I want to finish this. Joshua 24, 15 says, uh, If you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today who you're going to serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But hey, while you're working all that out, let me just tell you what I'm going to do. As for me and my family, every one of them, we're going to serve the Lord. So you and Jethro and the rest of y'all can be crazy. We're going to serve Jesus at my house. And that's what you got to make a decision. You got to verbalize that. Ecclesiastes 7.29, but I did find this. God created people to be virtuous. But they have each turned to follow their own downward path. That's why we have the problems we have. Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep perfectly peaceful the one whose mind remains focused on you. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have any peace. Well, instead of uh, two aspirants calling me in the morning, why don't you focus on him? Because he's going to give you perfect peace. Because he remains in you. Amen? 1 Corinthians 2, 16, for who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have what? The mind of Christ. So this is really what I wanted to hit today, is that your, collect your collective thoughts form your attitude, which is your normal state of mind. You know, you got to check yourself at the door. You got to check your attitude. It's time for an attitude adjustment. Everybody that wants to go to the chiropractor and get an a, a adjustment on the back, you know what? You're better off to have some back pain and get your attitude adjusted. Because that attitude adjustment might fix your back. Come on, somebody. Because, see, your attitude becomes your physical reality affecting perception of life. It's not going well. I hate my life. Why won't God help me? He ain't going to help you because they'll listen to how you talking. <laughs> Colossians 3.15 in the Amplified says, And let the peace, which is soul harmony which comes from Christ's rule, act as umpire continually in your heart. You're safe. Amen. Deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ's one body you were also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Verse 16. Let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah, have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its richness as you teach and admonish and train one another in all insight and intelligence and wisdom in spiritual things and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs making melody to God with His grace in your hearts. Yes, yes. We're called to make a melody. That's right. As unto the Lord. Philippians 2.5 says you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Uh-oh. 
Now we're in trouble. We need to have the same attitude that Jesus had. Let's see. Let's, let's compare. Jesus was rejected, beaten, and killed, and never said a word. We get cut off in traffic. We got to stand a long time at the line at, at Walmart or Lowe's. And we about lose our Christianity. <clears throat> See, your attitude determines your relationship with God, yourself, and others. Let this mind or attitude be in you. See, flexibility is a godly character trait that must be developed. You got to work in flexibility. Okay? Flexibility is the willful redirecting of our thinking towards God. Uh, Psalm 46.10 says, Let go of your concerns and stop striving and know that I am God. So you got to let go. Let go of your concerns. And so what are we dealing with right here? We're dealing with redirection. Everybody say redirection. redirection. I'm going along today because i got to get this word in you. It's too important. This redirected state of mind is entering into the rest of the Lord. Yes. Yes. But there must be a redirection. Yes. You must redirect your mind. Otherwise, you are not going to find the perfect peace which passes all understanding. Why does that scripture say that? The perfect peace which passes all understanding. Well, I don't comprehend peace in my life right now. So it makes no sense if peace would enter into my life. But when I invite perfect peace into my life, then it goes beyond any understanding of the human brain that I now have peace because I have given over and redirected my thought life. You see... In this rest, you focus spiritually, and your thinking moves to the mind of Christ. It comes out of your mind. It comes out of your attitude. It comes out of what's going on in your life, and it moves into the mind of Christ. Everybody back in the 80s and 90s were wearing little bracelets. What would Jesus do? It was wonderful, and everybody had the little bracelets and their little T-shirts. You know, WWJD, you know, what would Jesus do? It was wonderful, right? But here's the question. What would he do? Yeah. And can you do what he would do? Because that's, right. that's really what that was all about. So what would he think? How would he think in that situation? Because right. a lot of us just want to have that religious mindset of I'm going to do what I want to do and confess later. Right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> See, Hebrews 4.11 Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest uh, lest uh, any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Uh, Psalm 19.14 Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalm 77, 12, and I meditate on all your works, I will consider your awesome deeds. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 119, 27, cause me to understand the way of your precepts, that I may meditate on your wonderful deeds. Uh, Psalm 63, 6 says, I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. Yeah. So what I want to say as we close today is the last word is this. Kingdom success will only come when we stop using stinking thinking and begin walking in the mind of Christ. You've got to get out of it. You know, it's all about you and it's all about your problem. And it's all about your issue. Guess what? Somebody else got a problem too. Somebody else got an issue. And you know what? Somebody got a problem bigger than your problem. Somebody going through more hell than you. You got a, you got a little bit of a, of a big lighter burn on your butt, and they in the midst of the fiery furnace of hell in life, and you just got a little big lighter on you. <laughs> Shut up. Blow it out. And change your thinking. Amen. 
And you know what will really help you? Pray for somebody else that's going through something more intense than what you're going through. And watch as you pray for them, God deliver you. He'll do it, he'll do it, he'll do it every time. Because then you're not focused on self, 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 oh, poor fiddle for me, and all that whole thing. Amen? Because God cares about your situation. But he's given us the word to help us get ourselves out of the situation by utilizing the word as a tool. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Why don't you just shout the name of Jesus in his house? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi, I'm Timothy Miller, pastor of White Dove Church in Lafayette. I pray that the broadcast has blessed you today. We believe in White Dove that one word from heaven has the power to transform your life forever. We'd love to meet you and be able to talk to you about how the word has really impacted your life. We meet on the corner of Congress and University every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and midweek services Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. That's 1400 West University Avenue. Come be with us. I'll tell you what, if you come worship with us, you'll be glad you did. I'll be looking for you one Sunday real soon at the Dove. God bless you.